Hey everyone, welcome hey. back. Yeah, it's a brand new day, <laughs> a whole set of sessions in New Asgard for you today. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed yourself yesterday. Um, so today we are actually going to start, well I can't do the introduction, that's me. Yeah, hey, let me do that. <laughs> so today we have a special surprise for you because our first speaker is our very beloved co-host. Vidush Nama. So, Vidush. Yes. <laughs> oh, tell a bit about myself. Okay. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I introduced myself yesterday now that I think about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm Vidush, Vidush Nama. Um, well, I, 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 I do introduce myself in the session, but still from here, um, I actually have my own agency, Orion Consulting, where we focus on mobile and web development and a few um, IoT and desktop projects as well. And we mostly have fun. Um, and I'm a geek, so I dabble a lot in new technologies, have fun with it. Uh, lately, I've been working with robotics and IoT, all good stuff. Um, um. Yeah. So this session is going to be about Xamarin. Um, I've worked a lot with mobile technologies and a few, quite a few of them. And this was one of my favorites when I started. So yeah, it's going to be cool. Awesome. Looking forward to it. So yeah. shall we get on with it? Yeah, sure. Yes. Let's go. Okay. Hey guys, um, welcome back maybe to our virtual developers conference. It is day two and it's early in the morning. So, uh, and welcome to my session, um, the state of Xamarin in 2020. I am Vidush Nama. I actually founded uh, my agency lately, Orion Consulting in Mauritius, uh, where we focus on mobile and web development. Um, I've been uh, an independent consultant, a freelancer before. Um, I'm really passionate about creating different types of technologies, playing around with the, with the different offerings that we have. Um, it's a really great time to be a developer. Um, and I like to have fun with it. Like recently, for example, I've been dabbling a lot with robotics and automation just for fun, I'm trying to build a few things. Maybe I'm going to share it eventually. Um, yeah, so thank you for attending my session. Uh, thank you for being thank you for being here. Uh, feel free to tweet your questions at my Twitter handle at vhnama. And what I'm going to do is at the end of the session, I'm going to leave a few minutes so that I can just scroll the feed and look at the different feedback and questions that you guys have, and maybe talk about it. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. So. Xamarin. Uh, Xamarin is a big thing. It's been here for a long time and it's, it wasn't really always the best thing that happened. It had its issues, its ups and downs, like almost every technology that comes out. And I thought for this virtual developers conference, it would be interesting to look at the state of Xamarin right now in 2020. Is it a good offering in terms of cross-platform development or not today in, in like today's um, era? of, of uh, mobile development. So we, we have different offerings in the cross-platform realm. We have um, Flutter, we have React Native, we have Ionic. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to stick to Xamarin, Flutter, and React Native as the main comparisons um, because they kind of operate on the same wavelength. They try to do the same things, but in like different ways. Um, and in that regards, um, and this is a personal opinion. This is my personal way of describing Xamarin. Prior to like the latest versions, maybe the, the, the version four and up. Um, so I'm talking about the early days of Xamarin. It was, it was always a really interesting choice. It was really good. It, what it did, it did it right. Um, but it was not always the easiest um, platform to use. Um, what I mean by that is it was really easy for you to create a functional application, something that will work, something that will do what it needs to do. It was really easy to do that with Xamarin. Uh, and I love the way um, the code is. I loved C Sharp. Uh, I still do. But uh, it was not always malleable, as in uh, you could not always manipulate things like especially UI related and so on, so that it fits your needs. Um, this is not to say that the other platforms do this effortlessly. No, they all have their own um, 
they all have their own way of doing things but i do from personal experience i i will say that i noticed for example on react native it's a lot easier to tweak the the ui to fit your needs the small things here and there it's a lot easier to add them in and um, provide that nice user experience um so that was xamarin before th uh, for the text but then recently the, the good thing about, well, not recently, that's been for always, but the good thing about Xamarin since the start, uh, they have always been consistent and regular with updates. So you, you see different updates, you know, every once in a while, and you can actually follow them. That's a nice thing because that means that if something happens, if um, the, the mobile application uh, development patterns is taking a different um, turn, of events, Xamarin is able to adapt thanks to those regular updates, and they have done so. So this is why we have this session today. Okay, so that's enough of um, description for the technology. I'm going to dive into what we'll cover during this session. Uh, so what's up with Xamarin now? A few things. I'm going to cover a few new things that have been added in version 4.6 and up, um, just to have a look at what it looks like right now so uh, the first thing is material design material design is something that was it's developers and users alike they really like material design um, it's a it's a question of choice people have different opinions about it but generally it had a good impact it looks good it works good it um so why not material works um, and when you are developing, when you are developing for cross-platform, it makes all the sense to um, to try to streamline your design. Sometimes on both platforms, Android and iOS. Sometimes, in some cases, it is true that you want to retain this native feeling of the different devices. But in a lot of other cases, you want to provide the same kind of design pattern over all your offerings regardless of platform, this, this has to be respected as well. Um, so it, 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 it did not used to be easy to, um, to add material, to go for material design in Xamarin, but it is now. So we are going to dive into a little bit of code just to check that out. I already have a project here, uh, nothing fancy. It's a project that was created, uh, the, boilerplate, the boilerplate project that basically gives you um, a browse with a few items. Uh, this is, nope, spoiler alert. Uh, there we go. There we go. This is what you should unsee this. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, you have this kind of thing. I'm going to comment that out too. This kind of thing, uh, where you can open it, view the, the, the stuff, um, add an item. So this is the classic boilerplate application when you try to create a Xamarin application. It gives you this. Um, but then I added a dummy page where I'm just trying a few things and seeing what happens. Um, so this is my dummy page. Uh, what we are looking at right now is we want to see material design. So. Um, for actually for material design, just removing a few things here, take out the clutter, make it a bit more presentable to you guys. Um, one final thing, I think it's this. Let's save and voila. Okay, so we have this little set of code uh, where we have a useless button that does not do anything. There is no event um, attached to it. Um, by the way, a small um, shout out to this way of defining your um, colors and so on to keep some consistency. Uh, resource dictionary, really a lifesaver in terms of styling. So what you need to do actually is make sure that in your project, uh, if you go to the project, I'm going to stop it just for a sec. If you go to the project and you manage your NuGet packages, you just need to make sure that you have Xamarin Forms visual material set up in all of your projects. Um, heads up again, we I actually unloaded my iOS project because I don't have a, 
my uh, I'm not going to use the the simulator for iPhone, but I left the Android. But the 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 material design applies for all platforms, so you need to make sure that you have it for iOS as well. Uh, once you have the NuGet, uh, the second thing is you need to make sure that in your main activity for Android, you initialize um, the forms material um, design. So this these are the two prerequisites before we can use material design. To use it, it's actually really simple, and this is awesome, is uh, you go ahead and go to your content page and you can add this um, this property, which is visual, and you can set it, for example, in this case, to default. So if I deploy this, hopefully it won't take too long to deploy. Um, which, by the way, is also something um, that's really great about Xamarin is well, the debugging experience. This is this is generally great with Visual Studio. The debugging experience is awesome, but on the counter side is the deployment experience. Uh, debugging is good, but the deployment part is not really the smoothest I have I've had. Um, for example, in, in React Native, it's so much easier. Just start it on Expo and scan that QR code, and you have it on your phone. This this was a great way of um, doing it but it's still good it's a lot better than what it used to be you just um, you have the emulator the manager for it inside of um, Visual Studio itself so this is awesome uh, okay this is my dummy page and this is the useless button it, it is not material yet it is just a classic default one but if I go ahead here and I change this to material turn off caps there and I save this I'm basically saying this whole page should follow material design. And there we go. The button has morphed. Uh, what you can see is it's a bit shorter. The font is different. And not sure if you're going to see it on an emulator, but on a device, I can guarantee that normally you would have a shadow um, applied to it, which is classic of Android buttons. You have like this little... Um, uh, this shadow that makes it look like it's popping out of the screen. This is this is nice. Um, yeah, and you have the classic um, when you click on it, you have this Android, very Android -y animation where you have this um, wave, uh, which is nice. So this is good, but it's not always the case that you want your entire page and all of the buttons in the page to be material design. So you would want uh, a way to take control of that and actually it's easy to do it with Xamarin. Um, in this case for example here I'm gonna replicate this button there we go uh, I'm gonna replicate this button and you're gonna see that what happens is I added the visual material to the button and not to the page which is also a possibility once you do that um, just going to set this one to default. So the rest of the page is going to be default. As you can see, the two buttons, then two different styles. The uh, the difference between them is really clear here. So yeah, uh, so re the rest of the page is kept as default. And then just this one item is going for a material design. You can also extend this material design, how it's rendered. You can extend it um, by using custom renderers. But we are not going to go that deep today. Uh, moving on, I'm, I'm just going to use it like it is right now. Uh, the Xamarin Expander. Yeah, this is also a big feature. This is awesome. What I love that someone decided to wake up one day at Xamarin headquarters and they thought it's a good idea to add this in. Uh, what happens is it's often the case, mobile developers out there will understand this, but it's often the case that you have certain scenarios in your project where you want to show just a title, for example, and then when you click on the, the title, the item, it expands and um, shows the rest of the content, the detailed content. This is a really common and a really good way of making sure that your design is kept concise, your page is clean, easily used, understandable, you are not throwing a lot of information at the user, and you are actually still keeping the information in. So it's still accessible somehow. It's a really great way of doing this. Um, but it was not always easy to do this in Xamarin. 
Xamarin it was actually hot. I've had a few projects in the past where I'm using Xamarin and I had to develop this kind of um, functionality and I literally had to code it manually. So I had to create my own custom component that does this and had this um, action on it. When it clicks, it has to expand and then you have to go through the animations and so on. It was not easy. Um, but yeah, someone decided to wake up at Xamarin headquarters and said, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, we need this, which is good. So the way this is going to work is so the way this is going to work is we usually have, well, we normally have to use the expander um, element. Um, to use the expander element, we need to make sure we enable the experimental flag. Yes, this is something I did not talk much about, but um, with every release of Xamarin, almost every release, they, they normally um, they include something experimental in the package where um, they are trying out a new feature and they want some feedback. So they, they, they operate a lot on feedback. Um, so this is the case for the expander, for example, where it's an experimental feature right now. So if we have feedback, we can send it to Xamarin and maybe eventually it's going to get integrated into, you know, base Xamarin. Um, but it's uh, so so when you want to use experimental features normally in the past you know you had to go to for example in android the main activity and in ios the app delegate if i remember correctly um and go ahead and set flags and normally you would have something like this expander experimental flag uh great but then you have to do it for ios as well and again some guy decided to wake up at <laughs> examine headquarters and they thought this is kind of dumb to have to set this thing every time everywhere and they decided to allow us to do that using our application file so the app the example that cs the application c sharp file um, where you can actually just go ahead and set flags like this so you can do device that set flag set flags and and pass in a, an array of string um, it's it's a lot more convenient and makes makes a lot sense a lot of sense actually. Uh, okay, so that's for the expander. You need to make sure you have the expander experimental flag enabled, but otherwise it's already um, set up in Xamarin 4.7, 4.6. Yeah, it's it's set up in 4.6. Um, and then you can you can use expander so once you use expander you have two things um first you have the expander header which is basically going to be the text that you can see when it's not expanded and then you have the rest so this is the agreed that where i have some content um the rest what it does is it contains the expanded part of your your content so if i save this and wait for the hot reload there we go i have baboon and tiger basically it's a list and if i click on one of the items in this case i'm going to click on this you can see it has this really nice animation where um even the image you can see the image is animated this you, you um, previously, you actually had to develop this or use um, third-party uh, NuGet to get this kind of functionality. So it's really good that they decided to integrate it into um, Xamarin itself. Uh, moving on, so from expanders, um, let's see. Familiar back navigation code. Yeah, this is a small one. It's not a big, life-changing thing like the the, for example, the expander where. It you know, it changes a lot of things, uh, but uh, it's still a nice addition to Xamarin. So um, normally Xamarin, um, they, they, you now have the shell, which is um, the Xamarin shell, which basically provides a different way of handling your navigation. It's very focused on routes. Um, I'm not going to dive into how shells work. It's been around for a while as well, but uh, basically I have my pages registered here. Um, if I don't have the pages here, I have it in the code behind where it's registered here. So my pages are registered and they normally have a root, um, a root name, a string. So in this case, I'm just using the name of, um, and then to navigate in you can actually just go ahead and use that root name to do your navigation which is really handy it, it simplifies a lot of things about navigations in uh, xamarin um, 
so now what they did is they decided it might be interesting to add um, not here ah, that would be in the item uh, detail yeah th this is where it is so they decided to add the dot dot notation so the double dot notation to indicate going back um, again it's not a life-changing thing like uh, in terms of Xamarin but um, in some cases this could be super helpful because I'm um, sometimes um, in certain cases you actually have to manually specify where should you go from a certain page when you decide to go back which is not really always convenient which means you have to keep track of everything um, well, in this case, they are still keeping track of everything of where you were before, but it's done automatically. So you have you just go ahead and use the dot dot notation and it's going, going to go back to the previous page. Um, and it's also nice to see that um, they are using very common notations. Like this is very reminiscent of console where you do CD change directory dot dot uh, and so on. Uh, yeah, so this is about the familiar back navigation code. Uh, moving on to the next part, we have grid, row, and column definitions. Yeah, this is also a small one, but it makes all the sense in the world to have it. Um, normally, when you have um, Xamarin, the way it works is it's, it's he heavily dependent on layouts, on stack layouts, grid, and so on. Um, this is grids, especially, are super useful because you get to have this um, precise control over where things should go and how your screen real estate should be distributed. But uh, to do that, to use that, you normally, uh, traditionally, you would have this. So you have your grid, and then you have grid.column definitions, and maybe grid.row definitions. And you define how many columns you have, and the width, and so on. But then they sometimes, um, uh, some, some, some guy woke up again at the examining headquarters and decided that, yeah, this is, like, this is not really the best, um, you know aesthetically it's not like the best way for a developer and they decided to introduce this so it still does the same job as this the the, the counterpart the older counterpart but it's a lot easier especially when you're developing like it does not disrupt your flow you can define things really fast so i think uh, from a developer experience point of view, this functionally does not change anything in your app. It's just the development is is um, changed a little bit. So from a development point of view, uh, developer experience, it's really great to have it like this. Um, so as you can see, this is already deployed. I have it only in Baboon, where I have two columns as auto. Auto is basically saying that take as much space as you need. Um, and you can see this is what it does. So if I go ahead and change this to star, star is uh, the ratio, the aspect ratio, uh, no, not aspect ratio, but the distribution ratio of the, for example, for column, it's going to be the width. So when I put a star, I'm saying it's one to one right now. If I put one to two, then um, the text is going to get twice as much space and so on. So if I save this, it's gonna hot reload and you can see the image is taking a lot more space um, and they have like same, width. Uh, this is not what we want. We want auto. auto. There we go. Um, so that's for the grid uh, column definitions. Same thing you can do for row definitions. Um, and yeah, that's great. Next step is multi-binding. One, again, one of the small things that actually changes a whole lot of things for, for, for developers. If we go to the items page here, uh, and I'm going to open it here. You often have different kind of scenarios where you want to show um, a mix of information. So for example, in this case, I want to show first item and then um, a dash and the description or something. Let's take that one really good example would be the first name and last name. If you have your first name and last name stored as two different variables and you want to show them on one single line, uh, it was not easy to do that before. You had to use a whole lot of labels. In this case, for example, if I want first item and then um, the description right next to it, I would have to do this with an orientation of horizontal. Uh, I would have to, let's say I want to separate it with a, with a colon. So this right here. Um, so I would have my three, my three labels. Um, and yeah, that's it. So three labels, text, colon, description and then I can get this kind of UI 
not really the the, the most um, convenient. Let's let's set this to the same um, font size. It's not really the most convenient way of doing things. Um, so we've Xamarin um, 4.7, yeah, 4.7. Um, they actually introduced multi-binding, where I can do label. Uh, this happens. I can do label. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and take some of these things here so that I have the same styling as before. Uh, there we go. And then I can do label dot text so now i want like more control over how the text is being used and i can do multi bindings so i'm not mistaken no not this there we go so multi bindings and then i can have one binding oh, one binding and I give it the path of where it should bind. So in this case, it should bind to the text. Um, and the second binding should bind to the description. So how is this going to bind? This is the awesome part is we use string format. Uh, in which case I want zero. So the first two people who have used C sharp before will be familiar with this kind of formatting. Where I'm basically saying that in here, you should put in the text so same as binding text and in here you should put in the description now if i did not make a mistake when writing this uh i guess i did yeah i th yeah i think it's multi-binding not with an s yeah there we go so now we have our multi-binding where we are saying text and description so instead of three labels all of this code we now have this much simpler format where I can actually play around with it and do whatever I want. Uh, yeah, so this is nice. Uh, moving on from multi-binding, we have image manipulations. Yeah, this is a great one too. So um, in a lot of cases, like profile pages and so on, you want to basically show the profile picture as a circle, you know, something like this uh, which is nice and it's really um, following like common modern patterns um, great but it was not always easy to do that on Xamarin normally you would use a third party NuGet or you would have to do a whole lot of code um, but if I remember correctly there used to be this image circle or circle image third party NuGet that used to do this really well um, but yeah, this is this is no longer the case. You, you don't have to do that anymore. Uh, why? Because now in Xamarin, we actually have image manipulations, which is this. So if I uncomment this, what I have here is it's in my expander. This, this is also a great time to show that how the expander works with a whole lot of other things um, all together. So I have an image. In this case, it's an image of a tiger and I provide an image that clip and inside the clip I use geometry so um, in this case I'm using the ellipse uh, geometry specifying the center as 60 60 because I know that the height and width is 120 so center is at 60 60 go math and uh, radius is 60 uh, X and Y this is because I want a circle not an ellipse uh, that being set if I save this and this gets to reload, baboon stays as a um, square because I don't have it there. I have it for tiger. And here you can clearly see the difference. Easy um, image manipulations. Awesome. So now uh, moving on from image manipulations, there's something that is a bit related, which is paths. Um, what puffs is um, it's basically using SVG uh, to draw something on your screen. You can use this for different things. Um, uh, but one of the most common ways to use this is to create like really beautiful um, user interfaces with nice corners and irregular shapes and so on. Um, so what happened is uh, what happens is normally to use this in Xamarin, there are a few things you have to do, um, not much. The first is you have to set the experimental flag again for 
shapes. Where is it? This. Nope, not this. App.xaml.cs. CS. Uh, yeah, there we go. So we have shapes experimental. We need this flag because behind it's actually using shapes, examining shapes, uh, examining forms, <laughs> shapes, um, to render the SVG. And this is why I have a, f a fancy page. Um, so I'm going to just enable this button here. It's nothing, um, nothing extra about it. It's just a button that navigates to fancy page. Uh, and before we click on the button, let's check out the code. So fancy page is just a normal page. It's bound to a fancy view model, which does not have anything, just a title. So this, this title here and it's model animated. So it's going to slide up from the bottom. Um, have, I have a grid, um, central, uh, basically filling up the screen and I have a path, which, um, is what we want. So yeah, now, now that I have the flag set up, I can use path. Um, I have all this classic stuff that components normally have. I can do the grid row span, column span. I can set the horizontal and vertical options. I'm trying to centralize it here. I have the fill, which is really important. I can set the color and I have data. Data is the, well, this is where the SVG comes into play. And if I try this page and it opens up and there we go, this is actually the shape that this path is creating. So thanks to this, I actually now have this beautiful interface here where I can um, add a few fields and maybe a button down here. This would be really interesting to use. Um, I can actually play around a, a little bit with things, um, setting this, for example, to black. I think it's going to be a lot better in black. Yeah, there we go. And you can see it. So. Um, yeah, this is both. Um, if you want to play with this and you need SVGs, I don't have it in mind right now, but I'm sure if you search around, you'll find it. There is actually a site um, where you can design something, draw something, and it's going to produce the SVG and, and give it to you. And you can use those SVG in uh, in here. Just add it to the data and it's, it's good to go. Now, uh, moving on from both, uh, we still have... 10 minutes uh, is the final part. It's swipeable buttons. This is also super interesting, something that relates to modern design. Um, to use swipeable buttons, uh, you, I'm sure you're used to it by now, but uh, you actually need to set the flag because it's also an experimental feature. It's not recent. It's been added for a while, but I wanted to include it into in this presentation because it's, it's a nice feature that makes Xamarin a more um, complete package. So swipe view experimental. And then if I go to my dummy page and I'm going to enable its code here, I can just go ahead and use swipe view. No new gets, no nothing. So we have the swipe view. We have the swipe view left items. Basically the swipe view is uh, a view where you can just swipe to the left or to the right and reveal certain items. In this case, um, we have swipe view left items. So it's um, just a heads up on this, it's going to appear on the left. So you are actually swiping to the right, but it appears on the left. Uh, and same here, you actually swipe to the left and the items appear on the right. Um, you can set the text, you can set a, a background color um, and so on. You can actually even use images and that's it. So that's defining what should appear when you swipe the reveals. And then you have your actual content. So this button, I'm um, going to save it so that it hot reloads. This not so useless maybe button is a um, button in disguise um, because it's actually a grid, not a button with a label and a background color. So um, yeah, if I go ahead and swipe it to the right, you can see that the image is here. The, the text is here. If we remove the text, um, it's going to be just the image. Great. Um, and you can actually bind it to, um, to certain, um, events. So it has all the things like invoked. Normally this is what you would use. Invoked means when you are selecting it, something should happen. Um, so yeah, uh, for example, just, just to, um, just to demonstrate this, uh, normally if you swipe 
before I forget, normally if you swipe to the right, uh, to the to the left, you're going to reveal the items to the to the right, which in this case is lol. Um, um, yeah. So about the different invocations, you can actually use events like invoke, but in this case, I'm going to try to bind it to a command. Um, so what I did here is I have command binding. Um, navigate to fancy. This is exactly the same binding as the try me instead button. Um, before we, we try that out, uh, uh, yeah. Before we try that out, so if I swipe this here and I click, normally, yeah, it just goes back to its default position with a nice smooth anim animation. And if I swipe here, and remember there's a command here, and click on this, there we go. Uh, so yeah, the swipe able, uh, the swipe view. I think it's a great addition. Um, something to keep in mind in terms of UX is to make sure that uh, your users know they can swipe. It's not always that apparent, um, and you you don't want users to just try swiping on everything. So maybe this is something to take into consideration when and where to use it. But it's really nice that it's natively, well, it's still experimental, but natively available. Um, in Xamarin, this this is a great feature, and you know it, it, it creates a whole new um, set of uh, UX possibilities, uh, UI and UX possibilities. So um, now to finalize this, um, I'm gonna relaunch the presentation. Buffs and swipeable buttons. There are there is more stuff. Um, for example, I have uh, normally there's for example the visual state manager where you can now easily define different types of styling that should happen in certain cases. So this is great because then your styling gets a lot cleaner and, and there's a lot more that is available in, in uh, Xamarin 4.x and 4. upwards. So um, but there is not there is not enough time to cover all of this uh, unfortunately so we are gonna have to stop here these are just a few of the features about eight yeah eight features that i've decided to include in this presentation to show what xamarin has become and it's it's a good thing that it has become final thoughts um is xamarin the platform for uh mobile development or cross cross platform mobile development that's not that's that's not necess necessarily the case i won't go ahead and give a firm yes for this um i think just like xamarin which is growing which is adding a lot of things every time a stable a, a release is made uh, react native and flutter are also making strides in terms of development they are adding a lot of things that are um, useful and and gives us new opportunities to play with the ui and um, to play with our applications development uh, just like we've seen in this presentation, there are a lot of new stuff that is and keeps getting added to Xamarin, uh, Xamarin Forms, which makes it a lot, um, a lot more stable and a stronger competitor in the cross-platform mobile development realm. But that does not mean that the other offerings are not just as good. Um, so whether Xamarin is the platform to use for cross-platform mobile development, that's that's not necessarily the case. It depends on what kind of application you need to develop. Um, the nice thing about Xamarin is uh, even though they are growing and adding new things, they have not lost what made Xamarin a compelling choice at the beginning, which is basically development of a stable mobile application first. So it's still focusing on functionality while trying to improve um, some of its weak points. Um, so taking that into account, based on the project that you need to do, the need to develop, um, you have to make the right choice. However, if you do decide to go for Xamarin based on, well, for any project, I don't necessarily think that it's a it's a decision that someone would regret because it's a lot more um, mature as a platform than it was a few years back um, but that's that's just an opinion it, de it depends uh, of course on the various developers and what they want to do uh, so that's about it for my session um, that covers everything I had in terms of the state of Xamarin for 2020 thank you for watching the video and thank you for attending the virtual developers conference uh, 
Um, don't forget to leave a feedback, uh, comment on the live stream and uh, share the video, subscribe to the channel and so on. So what we are going to do now is we are going to move to a Q&A uh, &A session. And hey, Vidush, awesome job. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's kind of weird to see myself on the uh, live <laughs> 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 stream. But yeah, yeah, it was great. Um, it was. So, okay, so that's, yeah, that was it for me. I don't see any questions in the live chat. Uh, no, there's no questions in the live chat, but I did get a question from like a cat lover friend who oh. is asking you about CSS in, in Xamarin. What can you tell us about this? Oh, that's, um, yeah, that's, that's a juicy one. <laughs> it's true, it's true. <laughs> Xamarin does have support for CSS. Um, actually, it's pretty well documented on, on the Microsoft um, documentations platform. Um, website. Uh, it's not really CSS like in um, website CSS. This is never the case. It's very resemblant. It's, it has some similarities, but um, it's it uses the CSS way of doing things. And it's very, very familiar to people who have done web development before. This, this is an important thing because one of the things that kept Xamarin behind the other platforms is styling. This is kind of what I was mentioning um, at the start mm -hmm. about how um, it's not as malleable and uh, you can't really play with the UI that much easily. You can do it, but it requires some effort. But with this new um, support for CSS, which basically you include as an embedded resource, and then it um, it uses it on your on your page, um, yeah, things get a lot a lot simpler and a lot more familiar. Even for me, I I can I, I love that React Native, for example, lets you use CSS um, basically style sheets to um, uh, to do your UI styling. Um, you know what? I'm going to leave a link in the YouTube chat so that if anyone wants to look into the CSS um, thing, you guys can go ahead and check it out. Um, just remember to replace the dot with a dot. You see, because <laughs> <laughs> we can't share links. So. <laughs> All right. Okay. There we go. Hey, uh, Marie, Marie Emily, thanks. Thanks very much. <laughs> <Appreciate> <laughs> Okay, guys. Well, thanks a lot for watching. And Vidush, do you have anything else to add before we leave? Oh, um, no, I think I think we covered everything. Plus, you guys are going to see me throughout the day in between <laughs> sessions. So I don't want to bore you right now. <laughs> okay, let's, well let's then. Let's keep the things for afterwards. <laughs> okay, guys. So we're going to be back in about 15 minutes. And well, stay tuned. Thanks. Cheers.